Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at the autosomal DNA, so the predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a Scythian from Ukraine from the Iron Age. Uh, this is his predicted phenotype with Nashakot. He is predicted to have blue eyes, Greek shaped nose and blonde hair. With Ysek he is also predicted to have blue eyes and blonde hair. And with Snipper Free he is actually also predicted to have blue eyes and blonde hair and white skin. He did not have any derived MC1R or IRF4 variant, so there is no reason to assume he had any kind of ginger uh, ginger hair related genes and he had BH1, blue eye haplotype 1 and blue eye haplotype 2 uh, so no BH4 because he's got BH2, you cannot have them together and uh, his status for BH3 is undetermined This he was not genotyped for BH3 variation that my Nashakot looks for when it comes to Comte's Valmet variation, which is also known as the warrior gene, he had the warrior with the IO genotype, which means Val Val. It's a pretty non-European genotype to have, and the implications of this is that he had quicker reuptake of dopamine, less dopamine in his system. Uh, he did not have the European mutation that protects against myopia, so he might have needed glasses to see in the distance. And he actually had this very rare genotype that increases the risk of cleft lip. In case you don't know what cleft lip is, you can see a picture on the screen. I'm showing it here. And he also had a pretty rare, well, not rare, but kind of interesting genotype that increases the risk of brain aneurysm. When it comes to polygenic traits, he had an average risk score for coronary heart disease, an average risk score for type 1 diabetes. Uh, he had an average risk score for schizophrenia. He had a very high risk score for stroke, so he might have had stroke actually, you know, as an elderly person. And uh, he had an average risk score for Parkinson's disease, a very low risk score for Crohn's disease, a very low risk score for type 2 diabetes, a um, very low risk score for bipolar disorder, and a pretty average risk score for asthma. This is what he scores with Eurogene's K13 and it's very easy to tell the difference between a Scythian and a Sarmatian. At this point I can tell the difference quite easily and I've made a couple of videos on Sarmatians before. Sarmatians typically score 25 to 30 percent West Asian here and they do not score any West Mediterranean. So this, that's how the, that's the difference between Scythians and Sarmatians, right? Scythians are more, more like Europeans and with the Oracle here he's getting modeled as a mixture of Ukrainian or Polish plus Tajik. Uh, with a pretty low distance, so it's kind of kind of similar to him. And here is the sample with G25. As you can see, it's closest to Tatars and Erzia, which is also very different from uh, Sarmatians, because Sarmatians would be closest to uh, Tajiks or Pamiri people, right? So that's the big difference here. But he's still he's not a Sarmatian, but he's still got some South Central Asian, some kind of uh, West Asian admixture. Not as much as them, but still quite a lot. And that's why he's getting modeled as a mixture of Danish plus Tajik or Swedish plus Tajik or Sami plus Kalash or Brahui. So he's got some West Asian admixture too relative to what's typical for Northern Europeans. Here is what he scores with Harappa World. Once again, very different result from what you would see with the Sarmatian. He's only scoring 15% Baloch. And in fact, that's even within the range of like what a typical Northern European can score. He's actually closest to Hungarians here uh, with the Oracle, but still pretty high distances. He's getting modeled as a mixture of Northern European plus Turkmen. So there is, relative to Northern Europeans, there is a little bit of that kind of West Asian admixture, but not nearly as much as what you would see with Sarmatians. Here is what he scores with Pandian LK10. Once again, not quite a Northern European result. Definitely not a Northern European result, actually, with the 34% CHG, but also definitely not a Sarmatian result. Uh, much more Northern European than what is typical for Sarmatians. He's closest to Mardvins here, which is kind of what we saw with the G25 as well. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Finnish plus North Ossetian or Russian plus Chechen. So also not, you know, the oracle, like, this kind of an oracle would be very atypical for a modern Russian, to say the least, right? This is what he scores with Panzian LK12, and you can see this, by the way, you can see this pattern with all the Sarmatian and Scythian samples. All the Scythians have more European ancestry than Sarmatians, more European farmer, more Western hunter-gatherer, more of this European ancestry, where Sarmatians are more shifted towards Western Asia. However, this Scythian still has, despite being a Scythian, he still has quite a lot of West Asian admi uh, admixture. In fact, he's getting modeled as majority West Asian here. 
This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6, and maybe I wasn't paying attention to this, but he actually does score 12% East Asian here. Maybe you should go back in the video and see if he's scoring any other exotic East Asian components on the previous calculators I shown here, because I wasn't really even paying attention to that stuff, right? And with Gedrosia K3, he's actually scoring 15.7% East Eurasian, which is a lot. It's a lot of East Eurasian admixture. Thank you guys for watching this video about this Kiffin until the end. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And also you can download his raw DNA file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description.